Joining us now, we have some representatives of uh, North Oakland VFW Post 334. Chuck Haskin and Bob Mahan are joining us. And uh, we got a big weekend coming up, don't we, fellas? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, tell yes. us, let's start with Friday. Even though Veterans Day falls on Saturday, uh, there's some events planned on Friday. What's happening on Friday? Yes, there is. There are one events right here in the Senior Center at 12 noon. We're having a free luncheon for any veteran who walks in the door. So, and later that night, at uh, starting at uh, doors open at four o'clock to five o'clock, North Point Community Church has a veteran dinner. But if you want to go to that dinner, you have to sign up ahead of time because okay. they have limited seating. So, and they're expecting probably about 300 people show up for wow. that dinner. Oh, wow. This is the third year that they're doing this and they have a fantastic turnout every year. Yeah. Very good stuff. But that is the day before Veterans Day. Yeah, what's happening on Veterans Day? Well, around town, that uh, Great Lakes National Cemetery has their yearly program. It starts at 11 o'clock, which is a lot of significance behind 11 o'clock. That back when Veterans Day, or actually it was Armistice Day, started back in 1918, that was the end of World War I. That's when the ceasefire between Germany and the Allies came to an end. That was the 11th day at the 11th hour in the 11th month. And it had been that way all the way to 1954, where we went through World War II and we went, just went through Korea War. The Congress decided instead of calling it Armistice Day anymore, we would call it Veterans Day. Mm. So Veterans Day has basically been around since 1918. There was a period of time during the 1960s, early 70s, that uh, Congress decided to do the three-day weekend program. They tried to move all the holidays onto Monday, so all the federal employees could have three days off. Right. And a lot of states didn't like that, because you lost the importance of what Veterans Days was. Yeah, by moving. Yeah. So that lasted about five years. Then Congress rescinded what they did for only Veterans Day. Memorial Day stayed the first Monday of the month, and the rest of the days, Veterans Day went back to the normal 11th day, 11th hour. And what we ask everybody at 11 o'clock on Saturday, which is the 11th of November, take a couple of minutes and remember those that fallen. They fell trying to keep our safety and our country safe. Mm -hmm. So what they did, we all recognize and do that. Yeah. So veterans across the country that uh, will be celebrated on either, because it falls on a weekend, that's why we're having some things on both days, mm -hmm. but on the 10th and the 11th, and uh, keeping us pretty busy, pretty busy. Yeah, now this is the first time in recent memory that the ceremony has been, is gonna be held outdoor at the memorial. Traditionally, there's been a ceremony here at the Orient Center, which guarantees perfect weather. I looked ahead at the forecast, and uh, it looks like it should be a little chilly but dry on Saturday, right? Yeah, well, the program they're going to have will be here at the Senior Center. Mm -hmm. So we have the lunch in there, so yeah, there, yeah. There, there, there will be nothing at the, the memorial itself. Oh, wait, I'm confused. What's happening on Saturday? That's National whole, uh, National Cemetery. So there is no Holly. ceremony on Saturday? No, there's no oh, ceremony at all. They I just, was under the impression that there was going to be a ceremony because at the, the memorial. Because of the weather, I see. they decided to just to do the luncheon. Glad we clarified. Then yeah. we have other organizations on Saturday doing big programs. And if nobody's been up to uh, the National Cemetery in Holly, mm -hmm. it's a place to see. It's just wow. a beautiful, beautiful place. And their program starts at 11 o'clock. There is so many people go there that they park. As you get off 75, you got Genesee's hospitals there. They use that parking area as an assembly, and they bus you down to the cemetery, and then they bus you back to your car afterwards. Mm. But um, it's usually standing room only. You uh, yes, yeah. yes, very busy. Yeah, and they do a wonderful yeah. Get there early if you want a chair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Fantastic thing. Well, let's get back to the events on Friday. So the luncheon, you said it's just you can walk right in. And walk sit right down. in, sit uh, down. Any idea what's on the menu? I haven't heard what's going <laughs> to be on the menu, but I know the intent. They're going to have round tables set up. Yeah. And they're going to have a table for World War II vets. They'll have a table for Korean War oh, wow. vets. They'll have a table for Vietnam vets, and they'll have one for the Gulf Wars. And that way you can sit with other people that you never never had from the uh, tour of duty that you had mm -hmm. gone into. Me and Bob will be at the uh, Vietnam War. Okay. So we move from there. 
So and then what's planned for the ceremony? Any keynote speakers or anything like that? I believe they're going to ask the people in the audience to be the speakers. Oh, wow. So they'll ask each table to come up and tell a little bit their experience and what it was meant to be a military person, okay. be it any of one of the services. Now that evening with the dinner, I was at the uh, picnic that was held earlier this year and it was sort of a buffet style setup. Uh, any idea is it's going to be similar this year? Well, this, this, this is going to be the third year mm -hmm. and what they, they're uh, known for is a nice meatloaf dinner mm. and with vegetables come with it. Uh, they'll bring in some keynote speakers. Uh, fortunately, I haven't heard who they're going to be, but they'll bring them in and entertain us after we have our meal. And uh, usually they're speakers of different veterans organizations around the state of Michigan in activities that they're doing. I do know one of them is the president of Sports World. I'm pretty oh. sure, I think. What time? Never mind, forget it, go on. Ah, okay. <laughs> Heck, I might sport, be wrong. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about Sports World. I, I heard there was one speaker, there is a uh, organization downriver and they are getting together to build uh, miniature homes for veterans, they're now homeless. And they're going to give us speak what they're all about and what we can do as veterans to support that organization. Mm -hmm. But I have seen these miniature homes out in California. They've been putting them up and uh, moving vets from the streets into these little tiny homes. Mm. That gives them a place to uh, hang their head at night. Yeah. So, which oh, is a lot better so than doing on the street. Yes, it is. Yeah, we, we've probably discussed this before, but the, the phrase homeless veteran shouldn't exist. Right. I mm -hmm. mean, yeah, they, yeah, they did their part. They come back. They should be treated well. Yeah, that yeah. they should. And uh, in the Detroit area, we've had different organizations put buildings together, Pickett Square down in Detroit. I don't know if you ever heard of that. But uh, I was at Dennis and Grand River who donated the money to build that facility. And... Uh, and then along Woodward, I think there's a couple churches that got some places they get uh, veteran places to stay overnight. Mm -hmm. But they go with that. Mm -hmm. Where are any other places around town? Well, well, hunting at Keswick, don't they? Oh, wit or Friday, uh, Cindy Wright's going over to. Uh, oh, uh, what's that? Uh, or I can't think of the home now, but over she, in um, Auburn Hills. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a Something senior, religious, senior uh, center over senior. there. Oh, okay. She's going to go speak over there. Yep. Yeah. R.C. Miller is going to be going to a Clarkston Junior High, and I'm going to be going to actually Lakeville Elementary School. I was invited over there to speak about veterans too. So there's three more in our group that are stuck that have been asked to go out in the community and, and talk about veterans. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Chuck, did you mention something? You were in here recently. You said something about a little parade at an elementary school on. Uh, that, that, that what we did yesterday. That was yesterday. Yeah. Tell that us about yesterday. that. Oh, that, it was fantastic. <laughs> oh yeah. The second annual. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Delta Kelly Elementary mm -hmm. School, over in. Uh, Adams, over off of Adams. It's off of Adams. I forget what town it is. Is that Orion or is that? Uh, Probably no. Rochester. Hill. Ro Rochester. Yeah, Rochester. That's Rochester. That's over there, off of Adams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, we first had, for about 45 minutes, went into their gymnasium and had all the veterans from the kids in the school or family friends or veterans, they came and uh, got together and talked and had coffee and some donuts. Um, or another interesting thing what the school does, if that person had passed away or if that person couldn't be there, they had a picture that they would do and they would get in a parade and they walked around with that picture. Aww. So the veteran. So we led it. We had five of our members. We had the American, the POW, and our post flag. And we led the parade. We had the Rochester Adams, I believe it's Adams. Adams High, Band, yes. High School ba marching band right behind us. They, wow. they played the music and we marched. So we were good there. Then after that, they had all the kids that had families that was with the veterans. Along the, what we marched was the, there's a, in front of the school, they have a bus route. We marched all the way around that bus route and came around once and came back and stopped at the end by a flagpole. Along our marching was all the kids from kindergarten through fifth grade. And they were all there. Wow. As we got done marching, we lined up and all the rest of the marchers lined up in front of us. And then all the kids on the sidewalk came down. So we had a one big group of kids and us. Then they started singing songs wow. to us, all to all the veterans. 
and uh, that they was pretty nice. Special. Yeah, yeah, they did all the uh, a band, or, or they did all, all the marching songs for each military branch. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's yeah. what they started off doing. Yeah. And they did them, actually did them in order like they should be, too. <laughs> I was surprised. Well, they must have put a lot of practice in to oh, yeah. right for oh, you guys. Oh, the little guys, they were, they were trying and trying to get, <laughs> get that song memorized and do it. And... Uh, we couldn't hear them that well because well, the, we won a heck of a windstorm yesterday while we are doing all this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, the, we needed better speakers to hear them, but we, we knew what they were doing and big smiles on everybody's face. So oh, it turned fantastic. out to be a very, very, very nice event. And, yeah. uh, so the VS, VFW Post 334, that encompasses North Oakland County. Are, are you s still looking for members? I mean, I would imagine yeah. a lot of veterans groups are kind of aging up and you're trying to get newer, younger veterans who have served. Talk about uh, right. the status of the VFW. Always, yeah. always, yeah. always. It's, we it's, recruited yeah. about four yesterday. Yeah. Oh, wow. I had some Air Force come up and talk to me. Yeah. Bob's so, our membership director for our post. Yeah. Um, but an example was we had five guys yesterday doing the flags at this uh, parade. Well, actually, we needed 11 guys to do all the flags that we have but we just went with three flags because that's all the numbers we could get at that particular time. Yeah. So by having more people join us, we can go out and do the things that the community likes to see. Upcoming, we got coming on uh, December 2nd. Uh, down in Oxford is uh, a parade at one o'clock, Christmas parade. Then at six o'clock, I believe, is gonna be the Lake Orion lighted Christmas parade. That's right. Lar the largest lighted Christmas parade in the United States. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll be marching right in the front of that one. So how many members we get based on how many we can find. And uh, by us going out there and reaching the different veterans events like we had yesterday, we find some veterans are interested. We'll take any veteran who has served in an overseas conflict. All they have to do is give us a call. Bob would be the one to call. And your cell phone number is? 248-227-1619. Mm -hmm. Give Bob a call, get your DT-214, and give it on over, and we'll verify that you are truly a veteran, and uh, we'll welcome you to our, to our post. And mm -hmm. you guys do some great things in the community. Uh, I, I like when you said that uh, when, when people sign up for the service, they take an oath that uh, oh, yeah. their service to the community doesn't and when their when their uh, tour duty and so talk about what the VFW does in the community. Right. Want to go ahead, Bob? Well, we start off with uh, we work with a lot of the schools. We try to get into any of the schools we can, teach them patriotism. That's mainly what we want. Uh, we have done uh, a number of of clothing drives and such for different schools. The high school, uh, I do a lot with. Uh, uh, Lakeville Elementary School. I work with them quite a bit. Uh, we do fish. We have a, two shelves at fish now. and st We had one last year. We yeah. added another sh uh, shelf on this year so we could uh, help more people in the community. Right. Uh, we, uh, at Thanksgiving, we do the Meals on Wheels for when the Meals on Wheels don't work during the holiday, we supply baskets for those people. Mm. Uh, we do a lot of work at the uh, National Home for Children, Eden Rhapsids. We give them a lot of money. We have supplied them with whatever needs they have over there. Uh, we'll do turkey dinners for them this year. We usually do, do around 50 turkey dinners, complete dinners for them, so they'll have dinners. And all the homes over there are, are packed right now. Wow. There are people in waiting line to get it. And these are people of, of veterans, families, that need a helping hand. You know, they have to be going to school or work or something along that line to improve themselves. We pay for everything in their building. When they leave, they take everything with them. They yeah. strip the house out, take everything with them. Mm. And then we resupply the home and put new families into it. Yeah. It's, a, it's been going on for uh, since uh, World War II. So. Yeah. That's fantastic. There's 30, 36 homes out there that yeah. uh, right now there's a little over 100 children in those homes. Wow. So as Bob says, it's totally funded by the VFW. So and so you have a presence on Facebook uh, so people can reach out to you through Facebook? We got our own Facebook page. We try to keep it up to date with everything that we're doing. And um, we got one for our post. We got another one for the auxiliary. But uh, by going out there, you'll see that we, we keep quite busy yeah. and doing things. Our whole thing we do is 
based on funds we raise, and most of our funding is in the month of May when we go out and do our buddy poppies. Oh, right. And we'll check out an example of this one right here yep. that we turn around and be on street corners in front of stores and, well, all over town in Lake Orion, Oxford, and uh, Rochester also. But uh, we, for two weeks, we go out and do a, a fundraising. Then 100% of the funds we raise go into what we call our relief fund. That relief fund is paid 100% out to the community or veteran programs. Mm. So when we do fish, and I don't know if everybody knows what fish is, the it's food a pantry, food, yeah. food pantry in Oxford that really serves this community really, really nice. Yeah. And um, that's why we feel very comfortable in helping them do, do donations to them. But uh, I would imagine there are a lot of veterans that take advantage of their service. Absolutely, but yeah. a lot of them are. And same thing with Meals and Wheels, that they go out and deliver food to people who can't get out. Yeah. A lot of those people are veterans. Some aren't, but most of them, yeah, a lot of them aren't. Because we do, of the percentage of uh, population, we would count about 3% of the population that are veterans. So, wow. that, uh, so there's, there's a lot of us around. We just yeah. have to get out and reach them all. And then about a month from now, uh, there's usually a ceremony at the Orient Center uh, honoring Pearl Harbor Day. Yes, yeah. So uh, I would imagine plans are in the works to have that. Yeah, I haven't heard the details on what the program is going to be this year, but we do it here at the Senior Center that we do one. Um, oh, it's that time of year we probably get uh, maybe 100 people end yeah. up showing up and for usually it. Usually a great speaker. Yeah. They well, usually bring that, in great yeah, speakers they, for that. Yeah, bring it. And uh, last year uh, was uh, a young Marine that we have, uh, yeah. Bob's nephew, uh, Casey uh he, uh, oh, yeah. he turned around and uh, put it all together and did an excellent job. It was an excellent okay. job. And we bring some films of World War II and everything like that. Because one of the things we don't want to do is ever forget what's happened in the past. Because yeah. what happened in the past it could happen to us in the future. So I mean, there's an entire generation out there that wasn't even alive during 9-11, let alone yeah. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor and yeah. uh, the generation that remembers Pearl Harbor Day is yeah. getting smaller and yes. smaller and smaller. So. Very true. I wasn't alive yeah. for 9-11. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. I was still cooking. 9-11. Oh, oh, right. I was still yeah, cooking. Yeah. I, was, I was almost oh, there. Yeah. But I, <laughs> yeah, I say a lot of people didn't yeah. know about 9-11. So. Yeah, yeah. But there's a, a lot of the battles we have fought. Uh, you go in our history books, what the kids learn. Mm -hmm. um, we used to get invited because we were, uh, I knew I had a teacher over in Oxford when we were doing history. Um, Vietnam War was about a paragraph and a half in their history book. Oh, gosh. So they would ask us to come in and talk to the students and answer any questions because they had to write a paper about the Vietnam War. And so we would go out there and well, probably over the day because they brought a couple different classes, but we were there from 8 o'clock to about 2 o'clock and so we were telling them what our experiences was in Vietnam. And, uh, but uh, unfortunately that teacher went on we didn't, and COVID came along. We haven't right. done that in a while, so yeah, things have changed there. But uh, we try to get back, and uh, well, last year just down the street, the elementary school here, we came. Oh yes, in, the um, one right next down the right next door. Orient Oaks. Yeah, Orient Oaks. Oaks. Yeah, we were in there. Yeah. They asked us to that. come in. I forget what day that was, mm. and we had a bunch of our guys came. Uh, we something to do with the uh, flag day, maybe something with the flag. Anyway, it was a, an occasion to come there. And uh, again, they brought us down and, and lined us up in a bunch of chairs in front of their assembly area. And we had all these little guys, uh, from the smallest to the largest, and uh, we got to talk to them and speak to them. And they had done a lot of uh, uh, drawings for us yeah. and give us as veterans, which we appreciated. That's so, great. All right. Well, we're just about out of time, but thanks for coming down, guys. Really appreciate what you're doing in the community, and we'll help uh, spread the word. Well, we thank you for having us today. And all we have to say is, you see a veteran out there this weekend, stop and say it. Thank him for his service. Right. Exactly. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you. And uh, thank you we're for gonna... inviting us. Oh, oh, our pleasure. Our pleasure to have you.